Hey guys, what's going on? This is Sway with Sway's Long Care. So it's been a minute since I've been posting, guys, as uh, I'm sure everybody has had a uh, busy, busy schedule. And I uh, thank all of us uh, lawn care guys and outdoor guys are, are busy doing everything we can around this time of the year. So what we have today is basically a review, an overview of my Toro Time Cutter. It is the Time Cutter 5000 series. It is the 50 inch deck, iron forged deck, or fab deck, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, she is doing me a heck of a job here in the last couple weeks. So this is the Toro Time Cutter with the Kawasaki FR691V. It is a 23 horse horsepower. This is not the My Ride uh, edition. Um, as I did not have a My Ride on my last mower, so I figure, you know, it's really not bad um, for me to get a My Ride. Uh, from what I know and, you know, from other people that reviews these uh, time cutters, the My Ride does make a, a, a difference on the seat. But um, as far as me uh, getting getting around with these lawns, I really don't have any issues here in the Middle Tennessee area, um, as this this puppy right here has done me a, a good job. So I don't have any uh, major issues. I will go in depth with this mower here in a sec. But um, this is a uh, so this model is a 757.50, and date of manufacture was September. 2021 so when I'm basically recording this video we're currently in June 2024 today's Father's Day so happy Father's Day to you guys uh, you know I myself am a dad so I had a great week great weekend with it with the family so I cannot complain um, so happy Father's Day to you guys so I will be doing a uh, oil change on this uh, time cutter tonight I'm gonna show you guys the hours on it so she's currently sitting at 108.4 hours and it's already screaming for oil change so I will be doing an oil change on this tonight that's when I got this mower a couple years ago um, of course I had an older time cutter so I did get this mower two years ago um, from a local uh, retail store so I did not get this uh, from a from a local dealer or anything like that. Um, I did get it at a big box store, but I pretty much knew what I was getting myself into when I was getting this uh, time cutter back then. Um, I did add the advanced shoot system there. And whenever you guys get the advanced shoot system uh, or you guys have a Toro time cutter, you guys will need a bracket like so. And I got this bracket from Ballard's uh, website and whenever I went in, a, the, in their website, they basically asked me for model and all that other, you know, information that will be needed for your uh, time cutter. If you guys uh, want an advanced shoot system, you guys will have to put your model number and all that good stuff. But I think a lot of these uh, uh, time cutters with the notch deck. Uh, of course, you can't really see it. You can't really tell because of the um, that plate on top of it. Uh, it basically will work with the any kind of not any kind, but I get you know. Go ahead and uh, make sure you guys put in your model number and all that good stuff. But it works for these notch decks. So what I like about this time cutter, um, this is the little old fashioned, which you know my other time cutter had it. Is the fuel level there? I can kind of see it when when I'm basically standing from far. I can see the uh, fuel level there, so it's really not an issue. It doesn't have a fuel gauge or anything like that, which I know some of those uh, those fuel gauges can be a little bit, you know, people may have issues uh, with fuel gauges. They, you know, they go bad over time and all that good stuff. But um, I'm kind of glad it's it's a little old fashioned there, uh, so I don't really have any complaints over that. I guess my only complaint would be uh, where these screw holes and how this stuff is kind of assembled. Uh, they did not have pretty good, see, it's kind of rocking. So I will be uh, definitely getting some screws and make sure that thing is um, screwed in tight. So whenever I got it, and yeah, guys, this was a big big box store. Um, so I basically added some um, 
stainless steel screws there. Uh, so I don't know. I really can't blame, you know, blame them for assembling uh, this piece of equipment. But um, I will be basically making sure uh, as this right here, like I said, it's this this cover may come off over time. So I would definitely uh, look into that. So I don't really think it's a manufacturing type issue. I just think it's whoever assembled or you know put this stuff put this mower together so it's got the smart speed control system it's got turtle it's got that hauling mode and then that rabbit so normally it stays on rabbit mode just because you know I am pretty much running this thing wide open but for beginners or anybody just getting themselves in a zero turn or a time cutter like this uh, if you switch this lever to the turtle mode speed this thing will go about maybe a one mile two miles an hour so you guys can get really used to the controls so i do have these owner's manual so if i if i do need to check some about some information i will we'll check on the owner's manual about stuff that i need so one thing i will say about this mower yeah she is kind of dirty guys so i do apologize for that um as i've been working and and we started with a hard raining season this this year and now all of a sudden we're in a drought so it's crazy how this lawn care uh thing works but that's just how it is so with this fabricated deck as you guys can see the covers on these so basically what i do is unscrew that you need a, a phillips head then take the cover off if you want to definitely clean what's inside the belts or all that debris that gets in there but uh it's just basically a phillips head which i need to clean that and uh this actually came with this garden hose adapter i hardly ever use it i pretty much anytime i shop in my blades i go out under it and use a putty knife to clean out the deck and all that good stuff so i hardly ever use those uh quick connects one thing i will say guys this is um this uses the standard regular 87 fuel yes yeah, standard us 87 octane fuel regular gasoline uh, as i do have a couple of viewers from uh, different parts of the country or different different countries that uh ask about um you know if my stuff is uh gasoline or or diesel which i know some of there could be a couple um, manufacturers that, you know, only does um, diesel or any other kind of fuel uh, in other places. But uh, for the most part, I don't really run any diesel uh, equipment. Uh, everything that I use is basically gasoline, octane, you know, just regular. But uh, for mowers and weed trimmers and stuff like that, I try to use the non-ethanol. It's just better better fuel for my equipment so yeah guys basically these are the controls over here um as you have your pto switch there of course your your choke right there the throttle lever and then your ignition switch there so all right guys if you guys can hear that of course i'm not on the seat but basically that's the uh, the brake module for the Toro time cutters. So real quick guys, and maybe uh, some folks that do does the reviews on these, they may not get in depth with the brake modules, but I will wanna say this, this thing, I th or at least I think it's important. All right, I had to get my lamp guys, sorry, so I can show you guys real quick, but when you guys get down here, I don't know if you guys can see that, okay? It's got like these uh, rods that's going down that brake uh, module. It's that plastic piece with those pins. So basically anytime you engage the engine or put it in start position, the brakes will engage and disengage. So. What that does is this right here, the parking, the electronic parking brake, it'll open up 
and it'll close when it's it's completely shut off, right? So it's just for for safety reasons. But there's has been times with these mowers. There's been times where you have people that owns these uh, equipments that has the electric module or the brake module. And whenever these mowers sit outside, at least this is my experience, whenever these, uh, and I also did some research too, guys, so I'm not just here talking. Whenever you guys leave this sitting outside and it collects moisture and especially uh, when you guys are mowing wet grass and all that gunk gets under under that deck and under that machine. All right, guys, sorry. <laughs> a little bit of a close-up. Then that's basically, you can actually get quick to that brake module now. And I think Toro maybe listened to some of their customer complaints on on getting to those brake modules as that uh, prior uh, model that the time they assemble time cutters they were just very hard to get to it basically you had to undo the battery get to a plate and then this stuff was was hard to get to so i think toro finally listened and said hey we're gonna make it to where all these customers can be able to access this module and clean it up so basically what that module does is like i said it engages it sends a signal and basically engages disengages that brake system there for your mower to start if that module does fail then yeah guys you're not gonna get anything done even though solenoid and battery and everything is in place wherever it needs to go and you have you know all the currents you can have to start this puppy up she will not start guys and that's just the safety thing about the toros that but I guess I kind of don't like, but I do like at the same time because it'll self-engage whenever it's off. So yeah, guys, it's pros and cons, guys. I mean, it's not the it's not the best system, but I mean, it works. It works for what I do. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of really the only or one of the complaints that I have with with this machine. But other than that, it's very very minimal. So with this deck and height, you got. 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4 to 4.5 in deck height. And then you guys can use this foot pedal there to kind of uh, alleviate some of the tension when you guys are raising and lowering the decks. So yeah guys, overall this, this thing has 100 and, 108 hours. As I do have other equipment that I do operate throughout uh, my business. But I do use this machine. Um, as Toro actually has been one of my favorite uh, mowing brands. But I've used, I this machine here, I mean, it cuts through some really tall grass. It, it has a good striping. Let's talk about striping. Uh, as far as the deck goes, a lot of people will say, well, you need to have a striping kit to get a good stripe. But uh, not necessarily, guys. I mean, this deck will do it. Um, the stripes on this thing, I think they do wonderful. I don't have a striping kit on this. Um, so it's just the deck itself, guys. And uh, just make sure your wheels are, are inflated at the right PSI and everything's all squared around and making sure that deck is nice and evenly level to get a nice nice crispy uh stripe so yeah guys so here's the oil dipstick here uh the oil filter is really easy to get to and for you guys to change the oil i believe it takes a 10 millimeter open that up and on the other end you have like a nipple going on the other end and i think it's a half inch um tube that you place it back over there. So as soon as you open that up, the you know the oil, oil will get out, and basically that's how you uh, you know drain the oil. So uh, for these cowies, a lot of these are standard. I don't know if you guys can see it better, but with these cowies, a lot of these FR six ninety one seven seven thirty, I think. A lot of these are standard, and you know 
as far as the changing your oil has never really been an issue so and with this plate back over here yeah guys like i said it's she's dirty but i will clean this baby up here tonight just making sure that everything's running how it's supposed to run but yeah it's easy to get to so you undo the um, the hose clamp there and then you can just easily pop it up and then just clean her up with like an air hose or something so with these toros it i think some of these uh come equipped with with that bracket there and basically that is you want to put a a ball hitch right there maybe uh you're you want to add a an aerator attachment or any of that stuff so um make sure you guys get that that bracket that comes with it as i believe a lot of these already come with it so make sure you guys don't forget that bracket it does help a lot if you guys do some aeration or you know just adding some attachment back over there and then and, and want to use this mower uh, to get some aeration done. I think that'll that'll do the trick So with these machines they buy on by owners manual. They are recommended to service or change your oil every a hundred hundred hours or whenever you are mowing in dusty and you know dusty conditions make sure you guys are changing it maybe a little bit prior than that um, I Try to change it every 50 to 100 hours and that's just me guys but according to owner's manual, it is recommended to serve disease every 100, 000, or 100, 100 hours. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm talking miles and hours. Don't get me confused, but it's hours. Anytime we're talking about mowers, more, more than likely will be hours. And so whenever I got this mower, I did change the oil, I believe, the first uh, 10 hours of use. And then from there... I serviced it next time on the 50 hour mark just making sure and that's just me guys I change it on the 50 hour mark and then I'm changing it now at 108 so I will try to change uh, the oil every 50 to 100 hours and like I said guys that's just me personally but recommended purpose 100 hours so with this thing I will say that cup may come in handy um, if you guys are mowing um, I mean it pretty much keeps my beverage in there most of the times there's water with a cap of course and with this seat it's pretty much very comfortable you know enough padding down here I don't have any really any complaints as far as the seat goes and as I'm you know basically running this machine wide open it's got these armrests but sometimes these get in the way guys I hardly ever use these armrests that's why they're up um, they just kind of get in the way, in my opinion. But um, but it does come with uh, those armrests there, which is nice to have. So yeah, guys, this is not equipped with the my ride suspension. So of course, it does not have the springs, uh, does not have the setting. So I think with the my ride suspension was like two, three hundred dollars more at that time. But you know, I did not get it. So so this is basically where the fuel goes, and it's. It tells you right there, guys, E15, E85 will not take. So make sure you guys are, are adding the appropriate fuel in there if you guys want your machine to last. Yeah, guys, one thing I forgot to mention, the fuel capacity is three gallons on these. I'm able to mow maybe six, six yards, maybe a little bit over a quarter of an acre big until i really need to check the fuel gauge and then add some more um, i try not to let this thing go out of fuel or run out of fuel because i try to have backup and so yeah guys normally i'm i'm basically solid at a six six yard minimum of mowing and that's just with the three gallon uh fuel tank so So with these casters or this assembly here, for whatever reason, if you guys bend it, they are replaceable. So you guys need to order those or you guys get in a situation and bend those. I think they are replaceable. So I think you guys need to call Toro 
or call your local dealer and have them place an order for you because I don't think you get these online as I've looked for them not that I need them but um, I did go online trying to look for them one thing I like about this deck right here is you can actually stand on that and get on your, get onto your mower as the prior model did not have that option so that's one other thing I like so that compartment there that's where you hide your cookies no I'm just kidding guys so that compartment there I don't want to leave stuff in there as I have that bike chain um, or that bike cable you guys can leave stuff in there uh, for whatever you need out there it's nice to have on that little compartment there yeah guys so this is like I said this is an overall review of from my personal experience with this time cutter as you guys can see there like I said anything that I mentioned that or I may have missed uh, of course you know you can probably look up the owner's manual online and get all the specs about this uh, machine here it is a 50 inch deck fabricated deck um, did not really get in depth with the wheels but I just kind of went in depth with everything like a day to day use but overall like I said I did talk about the striping which it does stripe beautiful in my opinion so the engine itself um, the Cowie I've never had any issues with that I've run the same motor on uh, different equipment that I've used in the past and I still have uh, a Cowie on the X mark and I've you know it's carbureted stuff so um, never never had any issues with any Cowies whatsoever but yeah guys the reason why I got this torn time cutter because I had uh, the uh, prior uh, model of this time cutter and that's basically how I got started in lawn care is then I upgraded this one here which is a 2021 model uh, they do have the nice, I think it's all well built, uh, new frame time cutter that uh, 2024 uh, edition. It is pretty slick in my opinion. I don't know really much about it, but I don't, I think a, a couple things did change from that one to this one. Will I ever buy another time cutter? I may buy another time cutter in the future. I'm just very very appreciative of what this machine has done for me um, I do have other mowers that you know I do do run uh, for my business but uh, as far as this mower I do plan on keeping her to at least 500 hours and kind of see where it, where I go from there maybe upgrade to a different machine or a brand newer time cutter I don't know guys but will I buy another one of course you know I, of course I would but I would um I would buy another one and as long as I'm able to attach or add an advanced shoe system I would. I will say guys if you guys are looking to get yourself a time cutter for your for residential purpose or if you guys are getting in the business from my personal intake guys like I said don't take my word do your own research but from my personal intake is this is a great starting machine in my opinion um, this machine has already made me some some money and throughout uh, this season and last year and um, hasn't hasn't failed me by any by any means as of course this is somewhat still kind of semi new with 108 hours but for you guys to start your own business or looking at a mower to start a business I think this this machine will do the trick for you guys it stripes pretty decent in my opinion um, it's not really heavy actually it's it's somewhat light believe it or not I do have a 36 that is I feel like that machine is a lot heavier than this one so this one here if you guys get in a crazy situation and um, or you guys get stuck you guys can almost pick it up and move it if you guys have to hopefully you guys don't don't get to that point but um it's for me it's pretty lightweight it's a good startup machine and um 
it'll it'll cut some yards more more than more than definitely guys so i will end this video here guys but i appreciate you guys uh stopping by and checking my personal intake like i said guys if you guys want to you know do your own research about this mower this is my personal intake about this mower i've run this machine up to 108 hours i've had the other model time cutter before this one and uh that's really the only reason why i got this you know uh version of this time cutter is because of my old, my previous time cutter and i like that one and this one i like it even more um, like i said guys thank you guys for stopping by i think uh for stopping by and watching this video uh, of my personal uh, intake on this this time cutter guys I appreciate you guys thank you guys for following me thank you guys for the support if you guys like this video give me a thumbs up and um, I'm gonna see if I can get some more reviews on my other other equipment that you guys may want to see thank you guys for watching Sway's Lawn Care peace